There are some things that we wanted to talk about. We did have some people write in and make some comments about things like putting ARP rod bolts on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good idea, but this isn't going to be spinning past factory red line anyway. So it's I, really not necessary. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessary on this engine. I mean, there's one of the things that I wanted to try to do with this engine, my whole goal in this, when you said that we were doing it, I finally decided, okay, we're going to do this. I wanted to build something that's basically just a nice pedestrian, small yeah. block 302. A that, backyard driver rebuild. Yeah, because there are tons of guys out there that might not want to conquer this initially until we show them, you know, hey, two morons <laughs> you can, do can do it. Yeah. You can probably do it too. Yeah. So that was really my whole goal behind it. And when you start doing, it's, it's almost like the while we're here. Yeah. And, and the ARP bolts and studs and head bolts and all that stuff, it's good. They're good products. Nothing about that is wrong, but it's just not necessary in this power level. No, and I mean, I think, you know, if they had been something that was necessary from the get-go, Ford would have put them in those engines originally yeah. when they were built. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to be stressing the engine out over a certain RPM, let's say 4,500, 5,000 RPM. Yeah. If we wanted to spin this up to six, 7,000, absolutely going to get connecting rod bolts, but then we're going to be doing a roller cam as well. And yeah. again, it turns into the while you're here, and then all of a sudden you're going from a $400 yeah. parts bill on your rebuild to you know, over three grand probably. Yeah. Because the roller cam ain't cheap. No. If and you can find one. Yeah. The kits are about $700, which is more than twice just what we have in parts. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, we're in a position where we're just trying to make a nice pedestrian runner. So, I, I understand what you guys were saying about that when you're saying, hey, maybe ARP rod bolts. We are going to be replacing the, uh, the main bolts. We're going to be replacing the head bolts. We are going to take that level of caution, but we're not going to be putting ARP in there because it is more expensive than the Dorman products that you can get. And at this power level, that's really all yep. you need to have. So, um, we had, we, and there was a couple other things that you want to talk about. Roll it over. All right, so we're going to go over a couple of things here that are things that you could do to the engine yourself at home. You don't have to take it to a machine shop to have these things done. One of them is to go in and relieve the oil galleys here in the top. Yep, so pretty much any of these oil drain holes, take a die grinder like you saw me do with the cylinder heads, with a burr on it, clean up around the holes. These ones are not bad. Um, I've seen some that are really bad. I've seen these back casting holes be half covered up with flashing. Right. Uh, and that's just going to hold oil in here, which isn't horrible for your lifters, but it, performance it can starve the bottom end eventually. I was going to say you want you want to be able to have as much oil yeah. getting back down to the bottom end Once as Once it's possible. not pressurized you want it to go back to the pan as fast as possible. Didn't you say something about also putting a hole in the bottom mm -hmm. edge of the block right there yeah. for a drain out? common thing you can do is take a drill bit. You can clean up this big hole right here but you can uh, also take a small drill bit and punch a hole right there. That'll just cause a little bit of weep onto your cam gear. That'll extend the life of that. Uh, and then another big thing is your oil pump passages. That's a major thing on these because they are pretty ugly. So I'll pick them up and roll it over. Yeah. Now you're going to talk about you're going to talk about the oil galley here, and I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But this borders on being something that I would probably personally. Yeah, not, if, not if you're not a professional, if you're take not, that to a shop and have that done. Yeah, if you're not comfortable with a die grinder, don't do this. Um, These but, are okay. The ones on the galleys on the other end of it, on the top end of the block, that's fine because mm -hmm. all that stuff, the shavings and everything falls down and, you're gonna and, it be, does, and it's not in an oil galley. Yeah, and you're going to be cleaning the block multiple times anyway. Right. Um, but on this one here, this is your main oil feed. So this comes directly out of the pump. What you would want to do is take your gasket, scribe these inner circle, gasket match this port to it, and then take a flashlight like I have now, go on the outer ring of your oil filter and shine in there and you'll see a lot of rough edges and you just want to clean that up as much as you can, round out every side that you can. This will give you more flow and more pressure to your mains and your rods and just make the bottom end live longer. All right, so what other than that, is there anything else you would think on a basic build like this that you would want to do on the bottom end of the block? Uh, clean, up, clean up the flashing, like right there. We've got mm -hmm. a nasty little chunk right there on the edges of all the piston skirts. Um, and then also come into like that hole right down there. That is a oil drain from one of your cylinder heads. But go in here and clean up your uh, return passages from your heads. I noticed this one's got a little bit of casting flash around it, but 
honestly, none of this stuff is really bad. All right, well, um, I guess the last thing you're going to do is you're going to probably go in and start doing some of that kind of stuff, but we need to clean the block up. Yeah, a prep, little bit more prep first. it first, get all the oil and stuff just so that cat, uh, the grinding dust doesn't stick everywhere. Right. Um, and I'm probably going to go ahead and clean up, de oil everything, and then tape up the main journals and the cam journals just to keep as much grit out of the actual rifles as I can. Okay. I agree with that. That sounds good. Get to cleaning. Um, get to cleaning. All right, so this is a cheap Amazon cam bearing removal tool. Nothing special to it. I've got the right size bushing in there. All right, and one thing you are going to want to be mindful of is the orientation of these cam bearings. Forge, it's pretty easy because there's only two holes in the cam bores, but other ones you want to mark what location they came out of. Just keep that in the back of your mind as you're doing this. So there's one. Alright, so I have my multi-purpose cheater bar, jack handle, anything you need it to be. Gonna slide this down in here. This does have knurling on it, so just be careful not to drag it across the cam bearing surfaces. Alright. It's moving now. There it goes. Who says you need fancy tools? Let's slide this back in there. It's still adjusted right. All right. All right, so that is all of our cam bearings pulled out. None of them look exceptionally bad. Uh, this one ain't great. It's for, through the first layer of aluminum, but every single one of them has a burr on the edge where the cam actually ate down into the bearings. So definitely going to replace these. Coming out decent. <laughs> so, we do have some issues. Yeah, it's revealing a bit of scuffing. Um, a little bit in this one, 
That's the worst one of the of all of them that I see on this bank. Yeah. This one's got a little bit, but I think it's it's not as bad. But that is definitely that's a, a nail grabber there. Yeah. It's runnable. <laughs> Again, like we said at the front yeah. of the episode, this is not, I mean, we're just doing this so the guy can drive the car around until he gets his money saved up Yeah. to and, buy something better. And this thing's already 60 over, so there's not much more you can squeeze out of this block. No. And it's like, you know, we could get another block. We could put a 351 Windsor in it, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. you're not going to be at that price point yeah. anymore. Yeah. You're going to be another couple hundred bucks because you're going to have to buy a block. And I mean... I'm not going to say that we couldn't get a block for free from somewhere. We probably could. We're reasonably priced around here. Well, but, yeah, but I mean, still, you're still going to have either nothing in it and still have to do all the work. Yeah. Because you're going to probably want to rebuild the entire thing. Because if you're yeah. getting a free block, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Was yeah. it the, the golden triangle? Yeah. If you have it good, you can have it fast, you can have it cheap, you can have any two, but you can't yeah. have all three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what we got going on here. So. You've, you've honed it with, what 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 weight stone is that? I mean, what's uh, that? It's a 240 grit ball stone, right. or ball hone. Um, just did about 25 seconds on each. I'm probably gonna touch up these three more just to get the top landing. Right. A little bit cleaner, but the cross hatch came in pretty nice at about 15 to 20 seconds. Um, so just try to keep it consistent across the cylinders for how much time you're spending in it. Nothing really to it. And so you just took out the other side of the door or you got the other Yeah, no, no, no. There's more, more to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so I got the cross hatch reestablished. I'm pretty happy with most of the cylinders here. I'm not going to worry about the rest of them. So I'm going to take out the dowel pins now. I already got this side out. I'm just going to use a set of channel locks. These are reusable, but they are also super cheap. So if you're going to be doing this, I'd recommend just go ahead and ordering these. I think they're like $4 for all four of them. All right, so I got these out. So next up, I'm going to go through, scrape all the gasket surfaces, sand all the gasket surfaces, run taps through all of the holes, and uh, probably do a little bit of grinding on some casting flashes like we did on the cylinder heads just to clean it up and make it look a little bit better. So go find a scraper and get to work. All right, so I've got the block scraped off. I've got some 600 grit WD-40. I'm gonna go and sand down all of the gasket surfaces. This is probably gonna make some people irate, but I'm going to do the head surface as well. Best procedure, like I said, with the cylinder heads is if you have a thick piece of glass, use the glass, because it's relatively the flattest thing you can get outside of a machine shop. But this is going to work just fine. It's 600 grit, it's not gonna take anything off. It's not gonna make it wobbly. Just cleaning off the old gasket material that's stuck in the machining grooves. So I'm gonna hold it as wide as I can. I'm going to grab that as well, just so it doesn't catch. I'm gonna go down the entire block. You wanna keep this lubed, as, you, as much lube as you can. All right, and you want to go until you can just start seeing the fly cuts again. A little bit more on this one, and I'll be happy with it. Every single gasket surface on this engine, you're going to want to touch with some kind of abrasive just to get everything off. That I think I'm pretty happy with. All right, needs a little bit more. But you can start seeing the machining marks from where they fly cut the deck surface. So it goes across the bores, but that is what you want to see. I want to take a little bit more out, get all this stuff out and cleaned up, and the top especially, but it's cleaned up pretty nice.
the nitty gritty, but we're running out of daylight. Yes. You got a little. The nitty gritty. <laughs> <laughs> I know I should laugh. Yeah. But that's oh, yeah. good. Yeah. You should go to the store like that. <laughs> we did. <laughs> That's right, we did go to the store like that. Surprisingly, no one said anything. Yeah, we know. Well, I don't think they even looked at us. <laughs> All right, so we are right here at the very end of it. You're going to take this and clean the block up one more time. Yeah, probably twice more. Uh, clean it again, just like it did before. Soap, water, brush. Blow it off. Well, probably not blow it off, but then I'm going to soap water it again. Get Make sure every single crevice is clean because this grit is everywhere. Yeah, and yeah. you're going to do it with a hot water solution to keep it yeah. so it'll evaporate my, quicker. Yeah, and my blowgun, and just to dissolve the oils a little bit better. And so. then after that, you put some WD-40 on it. Blow dry everything that you can, get every scrap of water out of it, and then heavy coat of WD-40, and then I like to blow the excess of WD-40 off. So, pretty easy. So you'll be out here another three hours then? Probably. <laughs> Especially with the pancake, dry, pancake compressor trying to dry <laughs> the blow. We really need to get the other compressor running. We have <laughs> enough air pressure with that. Yes. Speaking of pressure, the pressure's on right now for you to go out and check out our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me. But more importantly, if we've done anything to help you out with your car over the last several years and saved you any money, you might want to think about joining us on Patreon. You don't have to do the $10 a month level. You can do less. And more importantly, you can do more. So if you want to check that out, please do. Also, folks, you know where I'm going with this? Super thanks. A one-time gift to us for being good at what we do or bad at what we do. I'm still waiting for that one person to give us two cents. I don't even know if you can do two cents on that, but it'd be kind of interesting if someone did two cents because I would call you out on it. I am just going to do it and call you out. So do me a favor, folks. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Auto Resto Mod. Mod. Go. Just keep <laughs> plugging away. Only 37,000 more. <laughs> I'm going to get a cold drink. You have, have fun. fun. <laughs>